Hi everyone, my name is Ashwin Aruldas, and today we will be going over deploying Site Collector. We will be deploying the Site Collector on Red Hat using a VM platform. All right, so let's do a quick walkthrough for the installation. I'm going to leave most of it at default for this session. Setting the root password. And based on whatever the internal policy for your organization is, you may or may not need this step. Uh, I'm going to create a local account on my system. So I'm going to be logging in th using this local account primarily and then running the commands to do the installation. I'm going to set up the network and host name here. And I'm going to go ahead and set up the installation disk. Now, if you remember, the root partition size was 75 gigs, but because we have additional partitions that get added in as part of the automatic storage configuration. I've added a little more space. Now, as you can see over here, the root partition is still not at 75. So I'm going to reallocate some space from the home partition to make sure that we have the required 75 GB allocated to the root partition. So let's go ahead, change this down to Now that I've done that manual partitioning, I'll accept changes. And of course, since this is Red Hat, we do need to either have the authentication key or credentials to connect to Red Hat and uh, make sure that we have the appropriate license to uh, continue with the installation. All right, once the system has finished registering, we're going to go to software selection and we're just going to do the minimal install. Standard with legacy Unix compatibility. I hit done. Everything else can stay the default values. If you need to change time zones to match your time zone, that's absolutely fine. You can go ahead and make those changes and we're gonna click on begin installation. All right, the installation is done. I'm gonna reboot the system and I'm gonna to switch to SSH to continue with the rest of the steps. Okay, so I've logged in via SSH to the system and we'll continue on now with the rest of the setup. Now with Red Hat 8, they don't have the extra packages for Enterprise Linux repository setup. So the one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to add that repository to the system so we can pull down the required packages. So this is the command. All right, so that repo has been added in. 
Now Red Hat 8 does come with Crony. Let's just confirm that. Okay, so we do have it running and set up, so we don't need to install NTP. It's either or, we don't need to install both. So if you have Crony already running on your server, there's no need to do any installation around NTP. So these are the required packages. Most of them should already be installed, but just in case it hasn't gotten installed as part of the default configuration, we'll pull them down. Yeah, and just as we suspected, we only had to pull down NTP stat and screen. Now with the recent changes to the Docker licensing, we do need to add a repo for Docker as well. So let's go ahead and add that in. Okay, and now we're going to do the installation of Docker. So from the list of required packages, we can see we've got all of the required packages except for Docker Compose. There is an additional step that we need to do to pull down Docker Compose and make sure it's in the right locations on the file system. We'll take care of that after these packages get installed. Okay, now that the packages for Docker are installed, let's go ahead and pull down Docker Compose. So to get Docker Compose, you're going to run this command, which is just pulling it, pulling down the file from the GitHub repo. And now we need to move this file to the right location and make it executable. So I'm going to move the Docker Compose file, and I'm also going to make it executable. We also need to create a symlink for this from both user local bin and user bin. So let's go ahead and do that as well. And now we are going to go ahead and uh, enable the Docker daemon. So if the system restarts, we know Docker is going to come up and that's not going to cause any issues for you. Now that that's done, we're just going to validate and make sure it's active. We can also do Docker info, and yes, it's up and running. Now that we have the core components and the prereq packages installed, we're going to go ahead and start formatting and mounting the disks that are required for the site collector. So the first thing we need to do is create the directories. There are three there are three directories that we need to create. Let's take a look at uh, the disk layout and labels. Okay, so we have these three disks that we need to format and mount to the respective directories. So let's get started with that. 
So I'm just going to run through this real quick. And now I'm going to set up the partition for this. Again, we'll do it for all three. And finally, we are going to make the file system and set up that partition. All right, so now that that's done, let's just validate it. And we can see they have been set up. Now we need to mount these drives. So let's go ahead and do that. In SDB1 is the 25 gig partition that we have, and that needs to be allocated to the flow file repository. So let's do that. SDBC1, this is the 200 gig. This needs to be for the content repository. So let's do that. And this one is for provenance. Now, this is just a set up for this session. If the system restarts, it's going to lose these mount points. So we do need to make sure we have these entries in the FS tab file as well. But before we do that, let's just do a quick check and validate. Yep. So these are mounted correctly. So let's take care of that last step as well. And make sure that we have this information in the fs tab file as well okay so that will do a zero here so yeah, we're just going to do a simple vi on fs tab all right so that's in there now so if the system does reboot, we are going to be able to retain that mapping. Now we can switch to the Exabeam Cloud Platform UI and pull down the files and the commands required to install the site collector.